All right, so what is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over the difference between coroutine scope and run blocking and how to use them. So let's get started in our sample project by turning our function main into a suspend function. And right under there, we will create a function called network request as always. And right below, we can write private suspend function network request. Now, real quickly, before I write any code, I'm going to try to explain the difference and then I'll show you with the aid of some examples what they actually do. So run blocking blocks until the coroutine inside run blocking completes. So whatever code you put inside the run blocking, it has to execute it and then whatever happens after can finally continue. And run blocking and coroutines do essentially the same thing. That means they both wait for the body and all their children to complete before they move on. But there is an exception to this because the run blocking method blocks the current thread for waiting while the coroutine scope method just suspends it. Due to this difference, run blocking is a normal function and coroutine scope is a suspend function. So those are the basic differences, but of course reading or hearing that doesn't really help without the aid of examples, you might still be a bit lost. It took me quite a while to figure out what they did, but uh, let's continue with this tutorial and actually start writing the code so you can see the actual difference. So the first thing we are going to do is write value time, and this is going to be used to measure how long our operation took. And we're going to write measure time in milliseconds. And inside this block, whatever operation we write, it will record it and it will give us the output time measured in milliseconds of how long this took to be executed. And then inside here, we are going to create a job and that's going to equal our global scope dot launch. And we are going to start this coroutine on dispatches.io and we need to import dispatches, of course. But for now, all you need to know is that I decided to use this thread because it is useful for creating network requests and just in and out operations, the IO operations. And the job is just to control the lifecycle of the coroutine. But with that being said, we are going to type in run blocking inside here. And we are going to first log that we are starting run blocking here. And then we are going to give it a delay of 1000 milliseconds. And right below, we have to write log run blocking again, and we are going to delay it 1000 milliseconds. And let's put these in quotation marks. Perfect. So this is going to block the coroutine just for a moment, which means the code under won't be executed until this is finished, of course. And down here, instead of writing run blocking, we are going to write coroutine scope instead. And inside here, we'll write log starting coroutine scope. And we need to give that a delay of 1000 milliseconds. And under that, we will also log this is coroutine scope. And right below, we will delay it an additional 1000 milliseconds. I lost my mouse, there it is. And to make this request actually work, we need to call job.join. And this just waits for everything inside to be completed. And as soon as everything gets completed, we want to log that everything was completed. So we'll write done. And outside of all of this, we want to log the time it took to complete all of this. So we will just write time equals time. So let's just go ahead and run this real quick to see what it does. So it starts the run blocking. It says run blocking, then it says starts coroutine scope and coroutine scope, then it says done. And this was completed in 4,200 milliseconds. And that's about the time we were looking for because we have four different delays and they were all set to 1000 milliseconds. So around 4000 milliseconds is all right. So now down here, after we have started this coroutine, we are going to write the code that should be executed immediately under that. And that's gonna take a delay of 400 milliseconds. And we are going to log that we want to cancel this job. So we're gonna write canceling job. And right below that, we will write job.cancel, which gives our coroutine a request to finish doing what it is doing. So let's go ahead and click on play and see what happens when we do that. So as you can see here, it started the run blocking and then it tried to cancel the job, but the run blocking decided to continue. And then it started the coroutine scope because as soon as it finished this second delay, it began with our next coroutine scope. But since the entire job received the request to be canceled, at that point it decided, ah, no more. And it skipped to the done statement down here because the job was canceled. And this total execution time took 2,200 milliseconds. So that's kind of strange because we wanted it to cancel the request after 400 milliseconds, which means 
Essentially, we didn't want it to print the statements over here. But this is where the difference between run blocking and coroutine scope comes in. This completely blocks everything, while coroutine scope just suspends it, which means if we actually turn this into a coroutine scope, and of course we need to type in coroutine scope one, and we'll just abbreviate that by doing CS and we'll write CS here and then click on play. You will see that as soon as we turn this to a coroutine scope, the program will execute and after a 400 millisecond delay, it will not print anything else. It will finish exactly where we want it to finish. And that is because the coroutine scope is actually suspendable while the run blocking is kind of very strong and really wants to do what it wants to do. So this time we have a total execution time of 600 milliseconds, which is not bad at all. And as you can see, we started our coroutine scope one and then we decided to cancel it. And since we canceled it in time before it printed this, it did not print anything else. It got suspended right here and that was the end of it. While in run blocking, it would print everything inside the block regardless of the job.cancel or any request to cancel it. But that's essentially the main difference between the coroutine scope and the run blocking block. And that's actually all I wanted to cover in this coroutines video. In the next video, we'll be going over context and how to use different dispatches. But as always, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.